Welcome to Acoustic Tuesday, episode 32. I am so pumped you're here, and I wanna make sure that you never, ever miss an episode of Acoustic Tuesday. So right now, click that red subscribe button, and don't forget to hit that little bell because you get notified of all of the new videos that get released. And of course, if you want Acoustic Tuesday delivered right to your email inbox, go ahead and click the link in the description. And not only will you get Acoustic Tuesday delivered right to you, you'll also get access to my Guitar Geek list, which is something you certainly do not want to miss. So let's go ahead and kick off today's episode of Acoustic Tuesday with a little Acoustic Tuesday tradition, some Guitar Geek trivia. So here's the question that I want you to ponder today. Which of the following guitars introduced in 1912 is rumored to be the first dreadnought ever, contrary to popular belief? Was it A, the Ditson Style 222, B, the Recording King Model K, C, the Gibson Advance Jumbo, or D, the Washburn Lakeside Jumbo? Go ahead and ponder that while we kick off Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 32. Now, 32 is a very significant number for me because it's the number I wore when I played hockey. It's the number I still wear when I play hockey. And I just think 32 is a great number. And making this episode great is not only the number, but of course, Sir Noah Jacob Heckman Jr., the first, and Levi Coelho, the man with the technical plan. Noah? Guys, Levi? Tony, thank you for being here Tony? today. Would you say that we're making episode 32 great again? I would say that. I would say that we're doing that. Nice. As if it weren't great enough. So great. You're making it great again. Thank you. Yeah. Would I'm we pretty... also say Team Acoustic Tuesday? Sure. Yeah, we could say Team Acoustic Tuesday. All right. Do you All want right. to be part of Team Acoustic Tuesday? Yes. yes. Well, I, I, I shouldn't ask if you want to be part of it. It's pretty evident that you are a part of Acoustic Tuesday. Yes. But do you want to be part of Team Acoustic Tuesday? I think that's a direct ask. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Let's kick in to the Guitar Geek list today. Now, here's what happens. You, got, you get a guitar, right? And, and you've got it for quite some time. And you start to notice smudges and some fingerprints and some dirt under the strings, maybe in that armpit area. I know that's where I get dirt. On the guitar, not in my armpit. You know what I mean? I like to refer to that as guitar grime. Uh, I've also heard of it uh, um, uh, referred to as schmegma. I've heard to it. I've heard it referred to as uh, tone juice. Either the either way you cut it, it's it's dirt. Okay, it's dirt and grime that builds up on your guitar over time. And I've tried a whole slew of polishes uh, throughout my whole guitar journey, and I still try different polishes. But there's one that I keep coming back to because I love what it does to the guitar, and it is. Gibson's Pump Polish. Uh, I absolutely adore this polish. It comes in an unassuming white bottle with this orange label that looks to be unchanged from maybe the 60s or 70s, but it's what's inside that really blows me away. And this polish is fantastic because it not only shines up the guitar really nice, it takes care of, of dirt and grime and all that other crud, but it leaves the guitar actually feeling really smooth, um, which is something that, that, that's why I love this polish. Uh, and oftentimes when you get it at the store, it comes shrink wrapped with a little polishing cloth uh, with it, which is a nice added bonus as well. Uh, so if you're looking for a polish or you're looking to try something new, I would definitely recommend trying out the Gibson Pump Polish. Uh, it comes in a little four ounce spray bottle. And as I mentioned, it, it usually comes with a polishing cloth. You can get it right around six bucks. Uh, I've seen it uh, for as low as $4.99. I've seen it for as high as $19.99 on Amazon. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that route. But do your shopping. Uh, Musicians, friends, Sweetwater, your local store probably has uh, Gibson Pump Polish in a reasonable price range. And uh, it, it will definitely make your guitar shine. Something you should have in the guitar toolbox uh, for certain. Now let's kick into item number four. What happens when you get a whole gaggle of stellar fingerstyle guitarists together, let's say in Tacoma Park, Maryland, and along with that, you mix in music enthusiasts. Well, you get the Thousand Incarnations of the Rose Festival, which is happening April 13th to the 15th, in the year 2018, in Tacoma Park, Maryland. This is a festival that 
I, I think it's the first of its kind. I, I'm not totally sure on that, but it's the first festival that I've ever seen dedicated to American primitive guitar. And this is kind of a, a, a guitar, solo guitar movement uh, started by John Fahey, Leo Kotke, Robbie Basho, Peter Lang, uh, other, other um, artists in that kind of realm. And the festival actually, get this, so it's happening on the 60th anniversary, anniversary of John Fahey's first recordings in his hometown of Tacoma Park, Maryland. I believe it's his hometown, um, or he grew up near there, I should say. Uh, so this is really, really cool. So let, let's let's uh, have a look at, a, at the um, the festival promo video. I think you'll really dig some of the playing, and also you got to check out the list of artists that are going to be there. So, so you can probably see why I'm super pumped about this festival. In fact, so much as to, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to pull some strings so I can actually get to the festival. Um, normally I check a lot of those artists that you saw on that list there. I check their websites to see when they're coming through Montana. And as you may guess, um, not often is the answer. So <laughs> to have all of, uh, you know, some of my favorite current artists in that style, Daniel Bachman, Glenn Jones, Marissa Anderson, amongst many of the others that were listed there, uh, all in one place. Uh, it, it just looks, the festival layout looks cool. It's all in a, in a condensed area with 11, I think it's 11 different venues. Um, just, it, it sounds, it sounds really, really awesome. And there's, there's the added benefit of being able to, to screen that Robbie Basho documentary. I know there's going to be panel discussions and things like that. So, uh, if you're a guitar geek in that area, if you love American primitive guitar, make sure to check that out. I don't think it's something that you want to miss at all. Now I'd like to look in the mailbag. Now, now the mailbag was, I, it was light this week, but I'm excited about its contents. Uh, first, my new issue of Acoustic Guitar Magazine came, and we've got uh, cover boy Andy Powers on the front. He's got, uh, he's missing his normal hat, which I actually didn't recognize him at first, because he usually wears, uh, what do they call those, uh, delivery, news, newsboy hats? Delivery hats? Yeah, I don't even know what those are I, called. It's like a... The Irish wear them. Yeah. But he normally wears that, and uh, so it took me a second to register who exactly it was, but there's a really killer article in here uh, about Andy Powers and the V-Class bracing, so make sure to check that out. And also in the mailbag, I got 
this fine package from a company called Monster Grips, a company I had never heard of. Uh, they reached out and said they make a, a, a pick, kind of a gripping device uh, that you actually stick on your pick uh, so that it doesn't spin and that you actually are able to hold on to it. Uh, so I just got this and I'm excited to try these out. I'm actually gonna feature them uh, on an, a future episode of Acoustic Tuesday. I tried them out very, very briefly yesterday. Uh, uh, and so far my initial impression was, wow, these are really rad. Um, but I wanna, I'm gonna put them through the paces and then give you the full report on a future episode of Acoustic Tuesday. Now let's move on to item <clears throat> number <clears throat> three. <clears throat> yes. Oh, I'm yes. sorry. Noah. Okay. Noah? No. Noah's not having. He's not choking. Um, Noah has something that he'd like to share. Sometimes, every once in a while, the mailbag comes in. Every once in a while, it's not a record or something for me. Although there's a funny story with what he's about to share. Do you want to share the story? Uh, no, you. Okay, okay. okay. So, so uh, just a couple days ago, male, male, I think a male lady came upstairs. I think it was a male lady. Uh, she came upstairs and put a, a record box right at the top of our stairs, right literally to my left. And Noah, I think, just assumed it was for me. And I, I did as well. But I didn't know what I ordered. Now, this happens often. Oftentimes, I don't know what I order, and sometimes things just come in, and I'm surprised. It's like Christmas. Um, but Noah walks over at the end of the day, and he looks, he picks it up, and he's like, oh, it's this thing that I ordered. Now, I don't want to steal his thunder, so I'll let him share what the, the actual thing is. All right. So <laughs> what I ordered was I ordered this back in January, okay? Uh-huh. Um, one of my favorite songwriters and composers – of all time, uh, recently did a live concert where he took uh, songs from the last 20 years of these albums of this project, and they performed them live in the Netherlands, right? Yeah. So, so I pre-ordered the live performance, and it finally came in. And here's what came in, and here's what I ordered. So, the name of the music project is Arion, okay? It came with this cool <laughs> tote. Came with an Arion tote. Okay? You could carry some books in that. You could. It's for his lunch when he but brings you know, his lunch. <laughs> but you know what came in it? The earbook. This is called an earbook. Whoa! This is called an earbook. It's not a record. That's why I thought it was Tony's record. Yeah. Okay. But it's an earbook, and it comes with the live CD performance, DVD performances mm -hmm. of the of the deal. Wow. Okay. And it comes with tons of just awesome pictures of all the singers, right? And, oh yeah, I got the, it's signed by Arjun Lukasen, the guy who writes, composes all the music. It's real cool. This is fascinating. And that looks beautiful, by the way. And It two, is cool. It's really good. Two more things, sorry. <laughs> I got an official Arion Universe t-shirt. <laughs> came with. Yeah. All right. And Does it come with a Dungeons and Dragons dice? One of those 20-sided <laughs> dice, too? <laughs> yeah. And an official Arion Universe Ooh. concert poster. Yeah. And so for those of us who don't know, what's the genre that we're talking here? Did these guys like write the uh, the Legends of Zelda no. um, music? or <laughs> No. No. Arion would be in the progressive metal category. Okay. Okay. And it's got a little bit of everything. He's got fiddles. He's got flutes. He's got distorted guitar. Stop He's... there. He's... I'm sold at fiddles and flutes. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the best part. He writes everything, but he brings in all these guest vocalists to do all the parts. So mm. it's like a it's like a rock opera, and all these singers that you may have heard of and know of come in and play a part in in the drama that unfolds within the music. I, I can't wait to listen. I right. let me just say this. That's well outside of my realm of comfort. Agreed. But I can appreciate your excitement. Yeah, that's true. Because I've pre-ordered lots of things and like just I sit and wait, mm -hmm. and then when it comes in, it's like it's a magical day. It is. So congratulations, Noah. Thank you, Tony. Thanks I'm for excited you for share. you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's move on to item number three, which of course is what I'm listening to this week. I want to feature a flat picker that I think flies under the radar. Just right now, as the show's going, I want you to think of your favorite flat picker of all time. 
And the names Tony Rice, Norman Blake, Doc Watson, Brian Sutton, those probably rattle around your brain. You're probably cycling through uh, some of those flat pickers. But this flat picker, I, I, I dare to think that does I, I dare to think that he doesn't often come up, but I think that he needs to uh, because he's the type of flat picker that exhibits just masterful tone. I mean, just just beautiful tone. And it seems as though it's coming from an in incredibly delicate touch. His picking hand seemingly floats over the strings. Uh, his own compositions are amazing. And I'm gonna introduce you to, right now, Kenny Smith. Now, I first heard of Kenny Smith through the Kenny and Amanda Smith Band, which is a band that Kenny has with his wife, Amanda. And uh, it's a stellar band. I'm talking, those two vocally are amazing, Kenny and Amanda. Uh, their, their musicians within the band are outstanding. And Kenny's guitar work really, really shines. Uh, he has this knack for kind of inserting little fills and his musical breaks are very succinct to the point. Uh, very, very much steeped in the melody of the song, but he always puts his own twist on it. And I, I think he's just a, a outstanding flat picker, a, a top five in my book. Uh, so let's, let's right now, I wanna show you an example of what I'm talking about, his guitar playing. Let's listen to uh, Kenny and Amanda Smith band play the tune Randall Collins off their album. <laughs> is my game, 15 is my draw, Randall Collins is my name from the state of Arkansas. Rolling nights in the railroad yard won't get you too much check, working on that sex you can surely break your back. $15 is my game, 15 is my draw, Randall Collins is my name from the state of Arkansas. I focused a ton on Kenny's guitar playing, which is outstanding. It's really inspiring uh, seeing him play both with the band and solo and in various formats. Uh, he's also played with the Lonesome River Band as well. Um, his guitar playing is, is always the star of the show, but I also want to mention his vocal, uh, his vocals. They're, they're just, they're, they're um, he's got a, a I think a very characteristic voice. I mean, it fits bluegrass very well, and uh, the blend between him and Amanda is really outstanding as well. So make sure to check them out. They've got a whole slew of albums. Uh, uh, the tune that you heard is off the album Live and Learn. They've also got uh, uh, an album Always Never Enough, another one entitled House Down the Block, and another one entitled Tell Someone. Now that's just a small sliver of the albums that they have. Um, those are the ones that I could find. You can find those on Amazon or kind of probably at your, your record store or what have you. But I also wanna encourage you to check out their um, their web store on, on their website. Uh, of course, if you want a full link to that, you can go to AcousticTuesdayShow.com, click on episode 32 and it'll be right there in the show notes. Um, their, their store is really great. You, you can see a lot of albums that you can't get elsewhere, uh, two of which uh, Kenny's solo albums. Okay, the one is called Studebaker, which is really, really phenomenal. Uh, and then there's, there's a newer one, and I, the name is escaping me right now, uh, but those are both on their web store. And also, there's a t-shirt that they have that says, um, you know the Intel Inside sticker? from, I think it was from the 90s. Is that from the 90s? Yeah, well, sounds he's about got, right. He's got, a, he's got a, a, a t-shirt that says flat picker inside in the same vein as that Intel logo that I think is really cool. That's on there too. So make sure to check them out. And uh, I really don't think you'll be disappointed, especially if you like bluegrass, if you like fantastic instrumentation, if you like awesome flat picking and killer vocals, that's definitely something you should uh, consider to add to your record collection. Now, I mentioned t-shirts, and that brings me to a portion of the show that I want to feature some guitar signals from our very own Acoustic Tuesday viewers. What is a guitar signal, you might be thinking, if, you're, if you haven't heard of that term before? Well, it's a collection of guitars that an individual possesses, and those individuals we often refer to as guitar geeks. So uh, there's three guitar signals that I'm, I'm really getting a kick out of this week, and I, I'm gonna share them with you right now. Let's start with Mark Y. Now, Mark Y was kind enough to bring out all of his guitars and essentially cover the couch with them. Uh, and he's got some really notable guitars in there. I love seeing the Taylor GS Mini Mahogany. 
Also, I wanna give a huge shout out to the Taylor collection that he has. He's got a 512E 12 fret, an 814CE, and a 150E 12 string, amongst others. And I know I know there's some Beatles love in there too. There's a, there's an Epiphone John Lennon uh, Revolution Casino, which caught my eye as well. So thank you, Mark Y, for sporting your guitar arsenal shirt and sharing your guitars with us. Next up, we have Derek and Tim, which is probably, th th these guys f really have probably the most comprehensive guitar arsenal I've ever seen. Uh, with their guitar arsenal they sent in, you'll see some arrows dropping down on the picture. There was actually, um, arrows pointing to each guitar and what it was, uh, what it is rather. And uh, I just thought it was it was very comprehensive, very well done. They they not only included a whole slew of beautiful guitars, I mean, there's a, there's a whole row of Les Pauls, there's a new uh, uh, Builder's Edition uh, with V-Class bracing in there, amongst other just stellar acoustic guitars, but the dog is there too, which is outstanding. Uh, I, love, I love seeing the dogs, I'm a huge dog fan, so. Thank you, Derek and Tim, for sporting uh, your guitar arsenal shirts and, of course, also sharing your guitars with us. And last but certainly not least, this is a special one because it's kind of a loaded guitar arsenal. Uh, Brandon, this this guitar arsenal was was brought to our attention by Brandon C. And we actually gave him a birthday shout out on last week's show. Uh, he said that he was uh, celebrating a small win in that he was uh, enjoying a glass of scotch for his 27th birthday. So happy birthday, Brandon again. And he also brought to my attention uh, something I'm going to feature a little bit later on in the show. Uh, but let's look at his guitars. So he's got just a whole bunch of guitars, and you can tell right away he's he's a Martin fan. He's got a DCPA5, a Dread Junior, two Dread Juniors, uh, an HD28 with a VTS top from the custom shop, and also a 0028, and to round out the collection, a Taylor GS Mini. Now, he sent a couple of pictures, and one of them I really love because it shows the diversity of his guitar arsenal. You've got these beautiful acoustic guitars, and then you have a, a, like a flying V style guitar. It's like it, it, you can see that he's an acoustic guitar geek, but he's also a metalhead. Now I'm assuming this, this might not be true, but when I see those guitars, I think metal for sure. And there's an interesting story with that V guitar. So get this, uh, the V guitar in the bottom left is a prototype of a design he sold to a company out of Ohio when he was 18. It never hit production, he says, but hell, I was 18 and sold a guitar design and they sent me a prototype. So that's pretty awesome, really cool story. Thank you very much, Brandon, for sharing your guitar arsenal with us. Now, you're probably thinking, those are some really cool guitar arsenals. How do I get my guitar arsenal featured on Acoustic Tuesday? Well, it's, it's really easy, three simple steps. Number one, order yourself a guitar arsenal shirt. There's a link right beneath this Acoustic Tuesday episode. You can pick your size, pick your color, and have it delivered right to your door. Second step, gather all of your guitars, everything involved in your guitar journey, be it a spouse, a brother, an aunt, an uncle, yourself, of course, and any furry friends you may have, and get everything all in one spot. Of course, don't forget the guitars. Those are really important as well. And snap a photo. And then next, send that photo to support at TonyPolacastro.com with the subject line, hashtag guitar snow. That's it. And then you'll be, you'll be on a future episode of Acoustic Tuesday in your guitar geek glory. And speaking of guitar geek, geek, guitar geek glory, Noah, can we celebrate some small wins? Absolutely. All right. Small wins this week uh, come from Joy, Ray, and Susan. And Joy says, just when I didn't think I could like this show anymore, you are wearing a Black Hawk t-shirt. <laughs> yes. And then, actually, she listed that as a large win. Oh, okay. But I, still. Yeah, I agree. You get... Yeah. I mean, if I if there's fellow Hawks fans out there, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. There are. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and the next one comes from Ray. Small win. Just had a small win, which at my age is a really big win, which he doesn't say his age, so okay. But... <laughs> <laughs> Just had a small win, which in my age is a really big win when I received my Martin OM28 with VTS top, and I am stoked. Oh, is hell that, yeah. What's that called? What is that? what is that? What is VTS? Vintage Tone System. Okay. It's it's kind of Martin's term for uh, um, I, the uh, Torrified, Torrified Top. Okay, I was wondering yeah. that. Okay. 
Uh, thanks to you guys for a great website and great teaching. Thank you, Ray. Cheers, Ray. Congratulations on the new guitar. That's awesome. And our last small win comes from Susan A. And she says, small win, stuck in an airport and saved by Acoustic Tuesday. <laughs> and listen to the Taylor and Otis Gibbs podcast. Thanks, guys. Oh, stellar. Awesome. Well, hello, Susan, and thank you for your small win. Uh, is that Those are the small wins those for the day? Those are the small wins for the day. Awesome. Thank you very much, Noah. Uh, thank you for everybody that, that contributed a small win to the Acoustic Tuesday show. If you want your small win featured on Acoustic Tuesday, it's super easy. All you have to do is in the comments below, put a hashtag small win, and then go ahead and describe your small win. Maybe you were stuck in an airport and you listened to a podcast. That's a small win. Maybe you changed your strings for the first time. Maybe you went to a killer show, whatever the case, we want to know. So please share your small win with us. Thanks again, Noah. Appreciate that. You're welcome. Moving on to item number two. Back in the 30s, there was a finish that was, uh, maybe I'll call it a novelty finish, uh, that national guitars used on some of their models. It was called the Frosted Duco Finish, and it's a, it's a, it's a pretty striking finish because no two are alike, and I'll explain why here in a second. Uh, the finish is based on, uh, the finish is applied, and then as it dries, the finish kind of crystallizes. And just like, think of, think of it like a snowflake, no two are alike. Well, no two Duco finishes are alike because of the nature of crystal growth. It's a very cool finish, but it kind of uh, maybe fell out of favor. It wasn't used as much, uh, but it's kind of making a comeback. And I'd like to cite a very important person in, in this finish coming back, and that person is Rick Besser, uh, located in Seattle, Washington of B Fanatic Guitar Works. Now, Rick, uh, according to his website, I've read a little bit about this, he's dedicated a large chunk of uh, his time uh, in ex to experimenting with this finish. Uh, he says in his website that he's lost a lot of uh, family dinner time because of his, his infatuation and experimentation with this finish, but I'll tell you what, he's, he's doing a pretty darn good job. If you look on his website, there is a, a, just a stunning amount of examples of this finish on a variety of guitars, metal-bodied, uh, national guitars. He's even done it on some electric guitars, and as an acoustic guitar geek, I really appreciate this, he's built some of his own acoustic guitars as well. Uh, so just really, uh, uh, just a really all around guitar geek. Uh, so, so thank you, Rick, for doing what you do. Now, you can go on his website uh, for inspiration, whether it be just the, sh the sheer aesthetic beauty of these instruments. There's uh, some really cool close-up pictures of uh, a metal-bodied, uh, kind of a, a, a silver rezo gray, if you will, with um, with this frosted duco finish on it. It's just absolutely stunning. And there's also a gold one as well, among among others. Now, the cool thing about Rick is that he not only does this finish to restore old nationals, but he's actually national sends him new guitars because he's so darn good at this finish that uh, uh, he does it for National, which is re really, really outstanding. You can go on his website and check out uh, many of the new guitars that he's done. And also, if he has anything in stock, you can find him on there as well. And there's a special guitar of note that I wanna call out because I was lucky enough to get this guitar secondhand. It is a Supro Collegian. Uh, that was made by National. It's a new guitar, but kind of designed uh, for when, uh, um, uh, designed along the same vein as if Supro made it. And he did kind of a, a gold, uh, I like to call it a butterscotch duco finish on that. And I'm, I'm lucky enough to have that guitar. I actually rode my bike to work today. So I didn't uh, have a chance to, I couldn't figure out how to get the guitar and the bike, I couldn't. I just couldn't. I couldn't do it. And I thought the uh, the cons outweighed the pros. I didn't want to fall off my bike and have the guitar be in pieces. But anyways, uh, so I've ha I've got firsthand experience with Rick's work, and it is beautiful. It's stunning, flawless, and 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 truly awesome. So make sure to check him out if you're a Rezo fan, or if you just want to go and look at the finish, just kind of as a as a as a, almost a trivia item. It's it's really really stunning. So make sure to check that out. Now. I've got, uh, I've got a really cool item that was brought to my attention uh, from an Acoustic Tuesday viewer. But first, Noah's got a whole slew of things that he's got to go through. We got, a, uh, we got some comments from last show that I know you want to share. Mm -hmm. We've got shout outs from, from folks that watched. And we also have uh, the You Know You're a Guitar Geek When segment. So I'm going to just go ahead and, and hand it over to Noah because I know he's got some stuff uh, lined up for us. 
All right. So for the shout outs, don't know if you guys noticed last episode, um, I put uh, two names together, George, Michael. I like throwing little Easter eggs in there for you. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> so be looking for that sort of thing going into the future. Is that a hint for today or? No, nah, yeah. yeah, not necessarily. <laughs> okay. So some shout outs to those who tuned in last week. Uh, D. Nelson, Jess, Sharon, Ted, Stephen, Susan, Joe, Batman, <laughs> Renette, Tony, Michael, David, Soren, Terry, Jewel, Elizabeth, and of course many more. And roll into some comments that we got from a few folks. D. Nelson says, This show gets better and better every week. The back and forth banter is hilarious, and the format or content is is so informative. Awesome. I've been introduced to a lot of musicians and songwriters that I likely would have overlooked, and I've been introduced to more. So thank you. Sweet. Awesome. Well, thanks for watching. Um, oh, I didn't read the rest. He says he was introduced to more than a few pieces of guitar geek equipment uh, that no one should be without. Um, oh, stellar. He'll be counting the days until next week. Killer. And uh, next comment comes from KB6YAF. Sounds like a radio station. Yeah, it does. <laughs> uh, your show is now part of my life. Thank you so much for your show and making me laugh. And, Thanks for watching. Yeah. And then uh, one last comment from last week's show from Tim. Tony, just watching Towns, Earl, and Clark brings back a lot of music memories of early years. Thank you. Otis, yeah, I will check him out. Have you heard of John Moreland? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Maybe you could put him in the spotlight? Like that's not a yeah. I, I, uh, I can't remember what episode he was on. He was on one of the earlier ones. I want to say eight or nine. I think. I guess Tim, you'll just have to go back and watch them all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so thank you. Um, he says thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you, Tim. I, I had a chance to see John Moreland, and that's what prompted the whole featuring him on Acoustic Tuesday because it was m totally mind blowing. All right, got a few. You know your guitar geek wins. Oh, good. All right, so. Uh, Sharon sent one in for Dom and said, <laughs> Dom says, you know you're a guitar geek when people comment on how many guitars you have and you have a genuine look of surprise on your face because you thought this was just normal. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, Viking Padre, you know you're a guitar geek when you spend Tuesday mornings looking at YouTube guitar reviews and demos while waiting for the new Acoustic Tuesday show to be posted. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> And uh, A.S.W. Witt says, you know you're a guitar geek when you have a two-hour conversation about guitar with your friends. Accurate now, statement. Now, I know that's, that's not a humorous one, but it's very accurate. Oh, it's about dead on. Just the other day, I was, I was going through, I was gathering information for Acoustic Tuesday, and I, I turned to Noah, because we got, new, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but we got new desks. I have a new Acoustic Tuesday desk. And then Levi and Noah and I, we, we all got new desks, which is pretty exciting in and of itself. So Noah and I are on this big, long desk now, and, and so I'm, I'm standing next to him. And I look over him, and I'm like, dude, I just love guitar. <laughs> it's like, it was like a random <laughs> statement. And Noah just turns, and he looks, and he kind of shakes his head. He's like, I know. <laughs> oh, you didn't it. hear the rest? I must have, it must have faded off. What? I, I, said, I said, I know. That's why you're so good at what you do. Oh, yeah, I don't well, know if thanks. you caught that part. You're I, I might not. I was really in the zone. I must I, have been gone for this conversation. You, I know. <laughs> I have a tendency to fall in these black holes when I'm doing research for, for Acoustic Tuesday. Well, be it trivia or just kind of doing the deep dive on, 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 on these items. I, I kind of, time seems to just vanish. And I look up and I'm like, oh, the sun's gone. Anyways. Anyways, uh, I got some more. Oh, you do have more. Oh, yes. Good. Now, Aloxley... FTW says, you know you're a guitar geek when you check out every link Tony has listed in the show notes since episode one. Whoa. <laughs> Not just checking them out after reaching the link, but continuing to root out the even smallest details and later discovering several hours have passed searching every nook and cranny of every website. <laughs> Keep it up, guys. It never fails That's to amazing. it never fails to enlighten, expand, and to reinforce the reasons we all continue in this all encompassing lifestyle. Hashtag bearded guitar bros. <laughs> <laughs> and last one for today comes from Radar468. 
You know you're a guitar geek when you drag your Fender to a beach in Cuba so you can play John Prine and Johnny Cash just so you can say you did it. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. Well, thank you for sharing uh, your comments and everything. It just it's it's always great to hear from you guys. Uh, so please, uh, if you haven't commented on a show yet, please do so. Just even let us know where you're tuning in from. Uh, and also, if you would if you would do us a huge favor and finish the statement, you know you're a guitar geek when. Uh, go ahead and leave that in the comments as well. Start it off with a hashtag. Hashtag, you know you're a guitar geek when, and then go ahead and finish that statement. There's been some really funny stuff coming through that is is just dead on. I mean, some of the stuff I read and I'm just like, oh, yeah. You just kind of nod your head like, yeah, that's me. Yep, got, yep, that's me as well. Uh, so so thank you for those that have shared so far. And if you haven't, please, please do so. I, I, I'd love to hear from you. Um, moving on to the last and final item of this Acoustic Tuesday episode 32. I used to work in Chicago and we would try all these different accessory companies. And there's one accessory company in particular that I have admired because they've grown so much since I was first introduced to them. Now I want you to think of uh, famous live music performances, okay? Think think uh, Jimi Hendrix at Monterey. Uh, Eric Clapton, pretty much any time during the 70s. Uh, Neil Young, pretty much, I think any time, actually. Um, there's some, some significant guitar straps that go along with those performances. And they're iconic, really, really, truly iconic. And they're, and they're mostly of the kind of tapestry vein, uh, really, really kind of striking, cool, well, 60s and 70s designs. And they're so iconic, I think as guitar geeks, we owe, we owe it to ourselves to, to never forget these iconic designs. And luckily enough, Soldier Straps out of Chicago, Illinois, is keeping these very designs alive. This this company, I've always been just super pumped about and amazed uh, at what they do. Essentially, what, what they do is they take uh, recycled seatbelt material uh, and use that as the base for their strap. On top of that, they put in these beautiful vintage pattern fabrics. Now, I, I noted just a few of them, but they have a slew of options. They have those classic kind of, dare I say, hippie style straps, but they've got everything from uh, uh, medieval patterns to just really cool vintage out of print odd fabrics that are, that are stellar. A um, couple, couple other things I love about these straps you can actually choose, uh, if you go to their custom strap builder on their site, you can see just the, the vast array of options uh, you can consider when, when designing a strap, but you can get the hardware that attaches the strap end to the strap, and you can actually get it in its metal. Uh, and I think this is it's a small detail, but it's something that impresses me because that's such an important link. Plastic, uh, which they offer, I've always been a little bit leery of because, well, it can, it can break. Um, so I love that they offer metal for that, and I love that they offer different colored strap ends. So you can really design a strap that fits, well, your stage outfit or, or the color combination of your guitar. Now, the, the leather ends of these straps are super supple, so they fit around an end pin jack uh, really, really well or an enlarged strap button, uh, so that's really awesome as well. Now, uh, I've, <laughs> I've actually had the, 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 uh, the privilege to know Jen Tabor, uh, the, the, uh, the originator, the, the founder of, of Soldier Straps, uh, since I was in Chicago. I wouldn't say no, she's an acquaintance of mine because she used to actually hand deliver the straps to the Old Town School when, when Soldier first started. And now it's so cool to see how the company has grown. So let me actually uh, cue up this video that is Jen talking about the straps and kind of their whole notion and philosophy. My name is Jen Tabor. I am uh, the owner, designer, manufacturer of Soldier Guitar Straps. We are based in Chicago, Illinois, and um, we've been making product for, I think, 13 years now on recycled seatbelt with vintage fabric. We have a lot of the original fabrics, dead stock from the 60s and 70s. This uh, right here is uh, the Monterey strap where Hendrix put his guitar on fire. Um, at this point, we have a lot of things missing for the booth because we've been supplying all the musicians here at NAMM this weekend, but uh, I can show you what we've got left. This is a Bob Dylan strap, what he had on the back of his greatest hits. I just found out that this strap may have been given to him by um, 
one of the Beatles, I'm not sure, I can't remember which one it was, but they gave him a guitar, yeah, maybe it was George Harrison, yeah, gave him a guitar and it had the strap on it and then it ended up on the Greatest Hits album. This is a version of our Neil Young strap. The black one has already been taken for one of the other booths, you know, this happens all weekend. Um, and then uh, we have a, an iconic owl strap. This is kind of one of the things that people have really grown to love from our brand, as well as the daisy and that list goes on and on. Eric Clapton, here's another Eric Clapton strap. This is a super fun 60s one that I just can't get enough of. I hope people love it as much as I do. But we started I, making... I've got a really killer banjo strap from them that I wanted to mention as well. And uh, again, it's just, I really enjoy what they're doing because guitar straps are one of those things that it should be fun to customize and they totally allow you to do that. Uh, from colors to fabrics, you name it, they do it. Uh, they also have some other really cool stuff as well, like camera straps and things like that. So make sure to check out Soldier Straps when you get a chance. Now, that's almost the final page turning on episode 32 of Acoustic Tuesday. However, we need to revisit our trivia quiz, our trivia question rather, uh, so I can give you the answer. So what was that question? Well, let me remind you. Which of the following guitars introduced in 1912 is rumored to be the first dreadnought ever, contrary to popular belief? Was it A, the Ditson Style 222, B, the Recording King Model K, C, the Gibson Advanced Jumbo, or D, the Washburn Lakeside Jumbo? Now, if you answer D, the Washburn Lakeside Jumbo, you are correct. The Lakeside Jumbo was introduced in 1912, just four years prior to the Ditson Style 222, which was made by Martin for the Ditson Company. And I think so often we associate the Dreadnought with Martin because of that Ditson Style 222, originally made in 1916. But uh, upon some digging, I found out that Washburn introduced that Lakeside Jumbo in 1912. So pretty interesting guitar geek trivia for you. So that's it. That's episode 32 in the books. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching Acoustic Tuesday. Now, there's one quick thing before we take a sneak peek into next week. I want to make sure you share this show with as many guitar geeks as you possibly can because the whole notion of the show is for guitar geeks to unite. Share in the fun of trivia, in the fun of finding out new guitar geek items, and the fun of small wins and sharing our guitar snows. It's just an all-encompassing guitar geek fest that I want as many guitar Guitar geeks to show up to as possible. So please share this show with your Guitar Geek friends. With that being said, let's take a sneak peek into next week. What's going to happen next week on Acoustic Tuesday? Well, next week on Acoustic Tuesday, I'm going to show you a single tool that can transform your guitar into a whole new instrument. I'm going to share with you a showcase that's right up the alley of any guitar geek and an acoustic artist creating quite the spectacle. And you're gonna have to tune in to find out because it's gonna be really, really amazing. So thank you so much again for tuning into Acoustic Tuesday. Again, you can catch Acoustic Tuesday any Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. It airs on YouTube. And of course, you can get it as an audio podcast as well. Just go to AcousticTuesdayShow.com for all the show notes and to get that audio podcast. Click on episode 32 and you can do a deep dive on any of the items I discussed today. And until next week, Keep on strumming and smiling, and remember, guitar geeks unite. Cheers. By the water tank where the shade is cool. Watching that straw ball sun for me well, ain't nobody's fool. Fifteen dollars is my game, fifteen is my draw. Randall Collins is my name from the state of Arkansas.